What is up, Toe Hills Kids, All Stars, 4 5 6, and everyone else out there in the world? Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so glad you're here today. You've chosen a great day to stop on by. Today, we are wrapping up our series on what God is like. We've been watching the Israelites go through the desert, uh, meandering through it, and we're getting to see that God is good, He is loving, and He is holy. And we get to experience all of that. And today, we're bringing it all together, and we're talking about how good God is. And so we'll actually be in 1 Peter today, which will be pretty fun. Uh, we're moving from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and we have been in the New Testament a ton. We're going to look at what Peter says about living a holy life. Um, and then we're going to look at the reality that, well, no one and nothing is like God. So that's going to be a ton of exciting things. But first, I want you to think. I want you to sit there, and I want you to write down or think about or talk to somebody about the three things that make you uniquely you, okay? I think one of the things that makes me me is that I'm tall and skinny, right? I'm six feet, two inches, and I am like 140, right? Which, you know, if you don't really know, that's really skinny, right? I'm, I'm skin and bones, I don't got much on me, and I think that that makes me me. Another thing I think that makes me me is my high energy. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but... I got a lot of it sometimes, and I love to bring other people into that energy, and I think that that makes me uniquely me. And the third thing is that I love being super focused and analytical on things. I like to look at things and study them. I love taking apart things and seeing how they work. And I think that those three things make me uniquely me. Now think about what makes you uniquely you. Take some time if you need. Pause it. Ask your mom or dad or somebody you know. Maybe they can help you out. But think about those things. Now, why did I ask you to think about those things? Well, because we're talking about God and the fact that nobody is like God. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, of course no one's like God, right? God lives in heaven and he's got all these powers, right? But there's some more cool things that we can learn about God as well, which is why we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1 today. So if you don't know if that's in the New Testament, it's going to be near the very back of your Bible. See, I've got it right here. This is how far it's in the Bible. I'm way back here. It's almost to the end. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to be reading a few chapters out of, or a few verses out of each of them. So grab your Bibles, open up your phone or whatever, and follow along with me. All right, guys. So we're going to be jumping back and forth in a few of these verses. We're going to start right here in verse 18. It says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. It was not paid with mere gold or silver, which will lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. So, what is God like? God is a loving, good, and holy God. Now, we say these words, and maybe we know what they mean, but the reality is we can't even comprehend what they all mean because God is so good and loving and holy that we can't quite understand it. You see, here on earth, Everything is imperfect. It's broken. And so our love, even if we love our mom and dad or our brother and sister, we will get in fights with them, right? If we're good, well, we're also bad. And ultimately, we won't be holy until we are totally with Christ in heaven. Now, we can have holiness on earth, right? We can act in a holy way on earth, but we will never truly reach holiness until we are redeemed in Christ in heaven. But that doesn't stop us from acting in a way that is good. So let's check out verses 8. So we're going backwards, and it says, You love him, talking about God, even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. And the reward for trusting him will be salvation of your souls. So you see, guys, we are called to love God and love God. Jesus, even though we've never really seen them, right? We've never seen Jesus walking around or God hasn't like come and had a chat with us around our coffee table or whatever, but we love him even though we haven't seen him. Why? Because he is good, loving, and holy, and ultimately because he shows that, right? Have you ever seen a really beautiful sunset or just had an amazing meal, right? You've been on a hike and seen a great uh, view from the top of the mountain. All of those are ways that God is showing you who he is. So guys, nobody is like God. No one can be like him. No one can do what he does. But you know what the coolest thing is? This God that is unique, that is holy and loving and caring, cares enough to come down to earth and love us. You see, he's not like 
a king or a dictator who thinks they're better than everybody else. He loves us and he wants us to love him back. And so he gives us good things. He gives us good food. He gives us clothes and shelter. He gives us uh, views to see and things to do. All of these are because God is good, loving, and holy. And he wants us to see him. Guys, ultimately, 1 Peter chapter 1 calls us to live a life that is good. Let's check out verses 22 and 23. It says, You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must be, so now you must show sincere love. To each other as a brother and sister. Love each other deeply with all of your hearts. For you have been born again. Or you have been saved, right? You have received salvation. But not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever. Because it comes from eternal living word of God. You see, nobody is like God. No one can imitate him. No one can do what he does. But he also loves us enough to call us into his family, right? He calls us to be his sons and his daughters. And it says that when we do, when we accept it, we will live forever with this God that is totally unique, right? So the reality is God is loving. He loves us more than we can ever understand because, well, we disobey him. We run away from him. We want to do our own thing. And yet he still chooses us. He is holy, right? Which means he is set apart. He is different from us because he is God and he shows love well. And he is good. He gives us good things. He gives us great things. He gives us a family, brothers and sisters, those who love us. And ultimately, all of these things show who God is. So when someone asks you, what is God like? You can say he is good, he is loving, and he is holy. And ultimately, he wants to get to know you, right? And he wants to live forever with you in eternity. So guys, trust in God. Trust what he has to say because he has great things for us. He cares about us. He loves us. And he wants to see good things for us. So thank you so much for watching, guys. We've got the Bible story after this if you want to check it out. If not, I'm going to see you guys next week. I can't wait. Bye. Peter, a follower of Jesus, wrote a letter to Christians. He reminded them of what God had done for them. When a person believes God's good news about Jesus, it changes the way he or she lives. Peter's letter encouraged Christians to live like Jesus. Peter told God's people that they should be holy. Believers have hope because Jesus will come again. Peter wrote, before you trusted in Jesus, you lived however you wanted and did evil things. Jesus gave his life to save you so that you could have true life in him. Jesus is like the perfect lamb that God's people sacrificed. Peter wrote, now you are God's children, so don't go back to how you used to live. Obey God, he has a better life for you. Peter reminded believers of God's words to the Israelites. God had said, be holy because I am holy. What does it mean to be holy? Being holy means being set apart. It means being different from everyone else. As creator, God is different from all of his creation. God calls us to be different too. He wants us to be like him, including in the way that we love one another. Before, we cared only about ourselves. We fought and complained. But God is loving, so he wants us to love one another instead. Loving one another isn't always easy, but it is good. Peter wrote, our life on earth will not last forever. It is like the grass and flowers that fade away. Long ago, the Israelites were waiting for God to keep his good promise to send a rescuer to save people from their sins. Today, we remember that God kept his good promise by sending Jesus. We can be holy because of our hope in Jesus. No one is like God. God is holy, good, and loving. Jesus shows us what God is like and gives us hope. God can make us more like Jesus. We can trust him 
and live joyfully for him.